Hallelujah. I worship you, Lord. Not my will, oh God, but your will be done in me, Lord God. Lord, I pray for the families of Bible World Church, Lord. I pray you strengthen them, Lord God, as we go out throughout the week, oh God. I pray that you would give us, oh God, a holy anointing, Lord, that we would walk in boldness, Lord Jesus, that we would speak and proclaim your word, oh God, without fear, oh God, or favor, Lord Jesus. For you, oh God, are our strength, Lord. We depend and we lean upon you, oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for a church, oh God, that believes in your word. Thank you, Lord, that your word will not return void, oh God. But you, oh God, are a shield about us, oh God. You fight for us, oh God. You go before us, Lord Jesus. We have nothing to fear, oh God. Hallelujah. You have not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Hallelujah. Oh God, we can speak to this mountain. Be thou removed and cast into the sea. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All of heaven is fighting for us. I thank you, Lord. Help us to see ourselves the way that you see us, Lord. Help us to have that revelation of who we really are in the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, have your way today, Lord God. And get the glory. Thank you, God. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. God, I thank you for what you're going to do here in just a few moments. God, I thank you for the faith that's in this room tonight. Lord, there's nobody like you. There's no one that can do what you do. God, we need you. We're dependent on you and nothing of our own selves today, God. God, I pray that you would shake us and stir us, God, until there is nothing left but you. Lord, I pray that everything of our flesh, every thought, every distraction would fade away in your presence, God. Oh, Lord, I pray we would lift up our hearts before you at an altar of sacrifice. Jesus, we exalt you today. Lord, let you get the glory alone. Jesus, we need you to step in. Fill this room with your presence. Fill this room with your glory. God, I pray that your angels would be loosed in this place. God, that they'd be ministering, flying and sweeping through, Lord. God, touching every need before we even make mention of it. Oh, Lord, we thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, for every hungry heart. God, I thank you for every soul that's going to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. God, I thank you for every soul that's going to repent and be baptized in your precious name, Lord. God, there is none like you. God, there is none like you. Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do in our church, Lord. God, I don't believe this is an average Sunday night, but Lord, this is a monumental Sunday. God, this is a pivotal Sunday, Lord, where everything can change for anyone who reaches out to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. If we could all stand across the building. It's so good to be in the house of God. It's so good to be with the people of God. I want you to tell someone next to you, say, there's no place that I'd rather be. Tell someone else, there's no God like our God. Tell someone else, say, in this place, anything can happen. Amen. We're about to go into a time of worship. Would you one more time just lift your hands to the air and thank the Lord and say, God, I want you to do what you want to do in me. Lord, I want to be obedient to you today. Jesus, have your way. God, I want to worship you with all my heart, all my soul, all my strength. Lord, I want to make myself available to you tonight. Jesus, have your way. Can we give the Lord a shout of praise today?
begin to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's in this place right now. God, you're so wonderful. God, you're so glorious. God, you're so beautiful.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Let's take all this energy and all this anointing, and as the pastor's prayer list goes up, let's focus all that anointing that's in this house right now upon those that are in need of a healing. They're in need of that one touch from God. And so let's touch God for these that are on the pastor's prayer list, for those that are in the house with needs, for those that are watching online, lift up your hands with me and let's call on the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you glory for what we feel in this house. Your presence is surely in this place. And Lord, we call upon your great name, Lord God, for healing, for deliverance, for restoration. Lord God, Lord, nothing shall be impossible in this place, right here, right now, in people's homes and online, Lord God, wherever they are, your presence is here. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. Everybody say in Jesus' name, amen. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. Truly the power of the Lord is in this place. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the living God. I'm telling you, in an environment like this, anything is possible. Praise the Lord. One more time, let's clap our hands to him and give him thanks for what we feel right now and what he's about to do. Praise the Lord. It is that time of giving in our service, that time of giving in our service. And very quickly, let us just... Let's just remind everyone, let's stay faithful to the Lord in our tithes and giving. Let's stay faithful to the Lord as he has been faithful to us. Are there any testimonies in here tonight? God's been too good to me. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. In just a moment, the musicians are gonna play. We are gonna continue in this atmosphere of worship and we are gonna come before the Lord and give sacrificially to him and worship the Lord with our tithes and offering. It's so appropriate. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. He's here so strong. Father, we love you. Thank you, God, for what you have already done here this weekend. Thank you for what you're about to do. God, we ask you to bless your people, bless these offerings, these sacrifices. We thank you, God. We pray this in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Everybody said amen. Oh, one more time. Clap your hands to the Lord and let's worship the Lord as we give tonight. come to pass and I 
promises that you're not finished yet. You're not finished yet. No matter what situation I'm in, no matter what situation my family's in, God, you're a healer, you're a way maker, you're a provider. You're not finished yet. Let's everybody love him together. Everybody in this building, forget everything else going on right now, but lift him up. God's been good to us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, we love you and worship you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What a beautiful presence of the Lord is in this house right now. We're so thankful for God's presence. Amen, 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 amen. I am just going to kind of forego everything we had on the schedule before the preacher comes up, and we're going to bring Brother Anderson right to the floor. I believe he has a word from God for us tonight. I believe he has specific direction for us tonight. You say, Brother Cam, you know what it is? No, I don't know what it is, but I feel in my spirit that tonight is going to be a very significant night in the history of Bible World Church. Brother Channel, good to have you here, our neighboring pastor in Suffolk. Love that guy. Praise God. Grab the hand of somebody close to you, if you will, and I want us all to pray before Brother Anderson comes that the perfect will of God, the absolute perfect will of God would be done in the remainder of this service. Father, I'm asking you in that name that's above every other name, the name of Jesus, that the perfect will of God would be accomplished in this service tonight. The perfect will of God. Father, I feel such a spiritual, a spiritual touch in this service. I feel that you are directing this service. I feel that you are directing this church. I feel you're directing Brother Channel and the Suffolk Church. There are things happening, God, that could not happen but by you. We acknowledge you. We recognize your hand at work among us. And we give you all the credit, all the glory, all the honor for it. Let your will be done here tonight, I pray. Speak to our hearts. God, if you'll speak, we'll follow. If you will speak, we will follow. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Everybody said in Jesus' name. Would you clap your hands and welcome our guest, Dr. Braden Anderson. Thank you, Pastor. I love you, Bishop. Thank you so much. It's such a privilege to be here. I'm going to turn quickly to the book of Acts, chapter 1 and verse 8. Somebody say, can I get a witness? Yeah. Amen. Can I get a witness? Turn to somebody next to you. I want you to ask him, can I get a witness? Amen. The book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 says, But ye shall receive power, somebody say power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be saved. If you know it, you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. God is in need of a witness. Somebody say amen. God is in need of a witness. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's see. You want to do it this way? Uh, you can mute the other one if you don't need it. Switch back and forth, whatever works for you. Would you lift your hands to the Lord tonight, Jesus? I pray that you would help me for the next few minutes, that you would speak, that you would minister, that your will would be done in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, in Jesus' mighty name. Change me, inspire me, challenge me, move me. God, I want to be a witness for you. Lord, I want to see your perfect will accomplished in my city, in my church, in my ministry, in my family. God, I pray that you would do something tonight, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise and somebody say amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated tonight. I'm going to turn to the book of Luke, chapter 14, and, and verse 16. I apologize. I'm going to move quickly. I don't normally have this much content, but there's a few things here I want to share with you. In the book of Luke, chapter 14, you have a parable. Everybody say parable. 
A parable, that is, it is a symbolic, not actual story. It is symbolic and it is because God is trying to give you a principle about the kingdom that might not be understood any other way than that he frames it in a story that we would understand. This is how that parable goes in the book of Luke 14 and verse 16. Jesus is speaking. You may have it there in red letters. It starts saying, then a certain man made a great supper and invited many. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to chop this up. I'll already start the first choppery right there. A certain man was making a great supper. If you could see into heaven right now, there is a God that is not sitting idly by. He is preparing something great. Something great for this city. Something great for this county. Something great for this region. It is as though God is preparing a supper. He has his sleeves rolled up and he's preparing something for everybody that you know he has a seat that is called out and reserved for children and backsliders. Come on somebody, a table that is long enough to fit everybody that you know. Everybody you've ever ran into. Everybody that you see on the street corner. God is preparing a supper and he wants everybody to be there. The position of heaven is very similar to that statement. The meal is cooked. The table is set. And the kingdom is ready. We have in this place exactly what they need. I'm telling you, if the hungry walk in here, they shall be filled. If the thirsty walk in here, they shall be filled. If an addict walks in here, my friend, come on. God's going to set you free. We have the answer to every question. We have the only God that will fit in that God-shaped hole. We are in a season of revival. We are in a season of harvest. I've done some form of outreach-based ministry for the entirety of me being in this thing. That's got to be now 17, 18 years straight. And I don't have the time to tell you every story. I wish I could, but we would take hours. Let me just summarize it as such. Over the last one year, everybody hold your ones up. Over the last one year, we have seen more miracles. We have seen more come to God. We have seen more baptized than we did in 16 years before. I'm telling you, we are in a season of revival. It is now not uncommon that we baptize atheists. It is now not uncommon that we baptize Muslims holding Korans. It is not uncommon that we baptize Presbyterian pastors, Methodist pastors, Mennonite pastors. Come on, we're in a season of revival. Verse 17, after he prepares that supper, he moves getting everything ready in the supernatural. The next move of God is enlisting you. Now somebody say the meal's already made. Why in the world would he need you? For whatever reason, this is the design of God. Not Braden, not Bishop, not any pastor in this room. This is the design of God. The design of God is such that when he prepares the most spiritual greatness you can comprehend, the next that he needs is a servant to go out and invite every last human being. I don't know why God doesn't enlist the angels. I don't know why he doesn't do it by himself. But it is the plan, it is the design, it is the high call and the duty of God to enlist you, a Christian, in reaching somebody else. So he sent his servant, somebody say, that's me. He sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden or invited, Come, for all things are now ready. When we are in a season of revival, a season of harvest, we ought to take uh, to the streets. Every servant uh, ought to take to the streets. Uh, my friend, if I could ever get a witness uh, of the gospel message,
message from in this room to out there. I'm telling you, we could impact somebody's life. We could impact a school. We could impact your workplace. We could impact a neighborhood. We could impact a city. But the servant has to get on the streets. Now there is a dilemma that immediately follows in the passage. And this was put there for us. All of this in scripture is put there for us. And in advance of us being at this critical junction. In advance of us facing the dilemma and the hardship and the problem with evangelism. He already embodies the answer in the parable. So let's hit the dilemma. And if you've been in church any amount of time. You hit the very same thing. In verse 18. When they went out and began to invite to the supper. The Bible says they all with one consent began to make excuse. How many have invited somebody to church and they began to make excuse? Come on, this is the dilemma that we face today. The first of them said, I bought a piece of ground. I need to go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. I have to go prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, now this is just crazy. I married a wife. Now I don't know what she was like, but evidently that is an explanation enough. Therefore, I cannot come. Not friend, what does the church do with the dilemma that not everybody wants this. Not everybody will come on the first invitation. Not every business card is going to be a soul added to the kingdom. This was God's response in verse 21. So that servant came and showed the Lord these things. What's he showing them? God, I went out but it didn't work. Then the master of the house being angry said to the servant, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. God's response to somebody didn't want it is maybe somebody else will. My friend, you might not get them on the first try. Try again. You might not get the ones that you're closest to. Find somebody else. You might not get the one that looks like you and talks like you and acts like you and has money like you find somebody else The way that I read the story, it failed the first time before they, because they labored after only a few. God needed them to understand, you don't get it. I want them all. The first time you went to the business owner, the first time you went to those that were getting married, the first time you went to those that had enough money for land, that's fine. I want them. But I also want more. I want the poor. I want the maimed. I want the hauled. I want the blind. Hey, right before I came up here, I went ahead and looked up the will of God. You know what the will of God is? It's on Google. It told me 249,200 people are in this city. God is invested in reaching every last one of them. God is invested in the rich and the poor, in the white and the black, in the Spanish, in the English. God wants to reach them all. We need a plan. To reach them all. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? I don't mean that only in the sense of you affirming what I'm saying. I mean can you be enrolled in this obligation. In this great commission. Can you be part of the plan. Part of the workforce. Part of the army. That means you need to bring it to work. Somebody say work. You know why you need to bring it to work? Bishop doesn't work where you work. He can't bring it to your work. God put you there. Do you ever think about that? God put you there. He trusted you enough with that circle that he chose you, that he sent you. He didn't send Brother Stone King. He didn't send little guy. He sent you. Why? He knew that you were the one. If anybody could reach him, you could. You could reach him in that hospital. You could reach him in that bank. You could reach him. Come on, somebody. He sent you. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness at school? Can I get a witness at work? Can I get a witness at the DMV? Come on, I need a witness. We need to 
bring it with us to the store. We need to bring it with us to the restaurant. We need to bring it with us to the mechanic. Man, I talked to one mechanic. They, they, I was in the city near him, and they made me drive to meet this guy. They said, you have to meet Wally. They put me in a car, drove me an hour to meet Wally. Wally's not a pastor. Wally's not hosting some conference. The pastor I was with said, you need to meet Wally. Wally will bless you. And I went to Wally's mechanic shop, and I said, man, they tell me I need to meet you. What's the story? He said, man, I don't know. He said, I'm not a minister, I'm not a theologian, I've not been to Bible school, but I love telling people about Jesus. Wally personally brought over 70 people to the last revival. They told me over 50 were baptized because Wally brought them from work. I asked Wally, how did you do it, bro? He said, I didn't do anything special, but every time somebody walked in the door, I handed them a card, just reached into my pocket, and I, I wanted to be a witness. I invited them. Come on, somebody. I want to be like Wally. I know that there's some great things we can do, but nothing's like being being like Wally. Come on, come on. Winning a soul is better than my degree. Winning a soul is better than what's sitting in my bank account. Winning a soul is better than what I drive. Winning a soul is better than my retirement. I want to win the world. I want to win every man, woman, and child. Can I get a witness? And something does begin to happen when you reach outside of your comfort zone. I've never been in jail. I love going to the jail. In this context. I've never lived on the street. I love going to the street. I've never been in a, I've never owned a $10 million home. I love teaching a Bible study in a $10 million home. My friend, I don't care how different our background is. I don't care how different our language is. I don't care if you got a tattoo of a handgun on your forehead. Come on, I've got the answer to every question you've ever had. I've got the only cure to every problem in your life, to every issue in your soul, and his name is Jesus. Now we are entering a new era where we have an advantage over every historic revival that has ever taken place. In the book of Acts, in the upper room, they lacked the materials and the tools and the resources we have. I'm thankful for the 3,000 that day, but it was a long period of time until there was another cohort that large. Do you understand that if revival broke loose here in a matter of hours, it could be picked up by national news and hundreds of millions of people could become aware of what God is doing. It could begin to move across Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. Do you understand what we have at our disposal now that they didn't have? We can print things they could couldn't print. We can post things they couldn't post. My friend, if there's ever been a time to have revival, it is now. We've got more that we could use for God than they did. I believe we're going to see more than they did. I believe there'll be revivals. We baptize more than they ever did. So I need flyers, I need cards, I need it on my Facebook, I need to mail it to people's homes, I need to put it on YouTube everywhere I can get to a human being. I ought to be spreading the gospel. I, come on, can I get a witness? Yeah. Now let me make it personal real quick and I'll move off it, but at a really intimate level, can I get a witness out of your Facebook? I know y'all are cheering about me using mine, but can I use yours? Come on, we, take, we, we love to shout about Jesus when we're in this room, but I hope there's just as much Jesus on your Facebook as there is leaving your mouth when you're in this building. I hope that you're willing to invite somebody, even if it might cost you a promotion. I hope that you're willing to be a witness. 
So God tells the servant, go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, bring in here the poor, the maimed, the halt, the blind. He, he says, I'm not just interested in the ones you went after. I want them all. That's how I read it now in verse 22. We've done that. Now what do we do? Now this is what I would say. If there was ever a church that made it to the end of the parable, it is this church. Most of the churches that I visit, we don't get to get to this stage of the application. Bible world church is a no joke apostolic church to the core. We're invested in reaching everybody. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter your language, your background, poor maimed, whole blind. This is your church. I think we made it to verse 22. And in verse 22, the servant says, Lord, it is done as you have commanded and yet there is is room. I felt so strongly this is right where we're at right now. God, we have went out, maybe not once, maybe even twice. We've tried a few different things. We've expanded who we reach to. And God, haven't we done a great work? Well, then the Lord said to the servant, he didn't clap him on the back. He didn't give him accolade. He didn't give him praise. This is what he said. Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. Watch the last words uh, that my house may be filled my friend you now have uh, the fully revealed will of God for this church uh, for this city uh, for your ministry that the house uh, might be filled uh, come on somebody God isn't saying we've done enough uh, God isn't saying that we're done yet uh, come on we will not stop until the house somebody say fill the house you know what fill the house means I'm not talking just Sunday morning I, Bishop, I know Bishop's been thinking about it. I don't know how many services we can get done in this building in one Sunday. I think the will of God is that we have every one of those services and fill every one. I think the will of God is that we got a full Saturday. We got a full Sunday. Next service, next service, next. Come on, full, full. And until the house is full, God's church does not stop. We don't stop advertising. We don't stop evangelizing. We don't stop teaching Bible studies. That the house might be filled. Come on, somebody. I want to see it filled in here. I want to see it full of the rich, full of the poor. I want it full of the addict, full of the drunkard. Full. I can't count the measure of people that have been preaching about a great revival coming to America. But my friend, my question to you would be, if it is here and if it is now, then what are we doing about it? What are we doing about it? The parable didn't say the servants are to sing of it. The servants are to preach of it. The servants are to tell stories of it. God sent them out. Sent them again. Sent them again three times until the house is filled. What's he saying to the church? I love that you sing. I love that you preach, but at some point, get outside the walls uh, that my house uh, might be filled. I just say something teach you here. So here it is. At a personal level, if I was to sit you down and you were to transparently say, listen, bro, I just don't do this. I've not done it. I don't do it. It would boil down during that discussion, I think, to one of four reasons. I have not found something that falls out of these four reasons. Number one, there is a group in this building. And, and, and sorry, hold on, let me time out, time out. Before I say this, I've been guilty of all four, okay? So I'm not preaching at you. I'm not preaching above you. I'm preaching to me just as much as I am you, okay? So don't, don't, don't feel uncomfortable by any of this. But number one, there is a group in this building that feels they are too unqualified to share the gospel. Say unqualified. Let me tell you what the devil's been telling you in the back of your head. You know that you have no background in this thing. You know that you're not a very good person at the end of the day and you've still got some junk you're working on. You might not have a position in the church. You might not have a degree in theology. You might not have read your Bible cover to cover so you look in the mirror and believe he is 
is too unqualified to tell anybody else. My friend, let me speak straight to you today. You can be no more qualified than when God filled you with the Holy Ghost because it said once he did that, you are a witness. You might not be perfect yet and that's okay. You might not be a pastor's kid. I'm not either. That's okay. You might not been in Bible school. I haven't either. That's okay. My friend, if you know one scripture, that's enough to tell somebody one scripture. I don't have the money. That's okay. I don't have the smarts. That's okay. I'm not a good speaker. That's okay. I'm not extroverted. That's okay. Now, let's take that coin and flip it right over. Here's the other half of the room. You're too qualified. Now, this is crazy. You come in thinking, I'm not good enough to tell anybody about this. They're going to see through me. I'm not the real deal. I don't walk the walk, talk the talk, smell the smell. But then you get to a place where now I'm too qualified. I don't come from a background like they do. I don't talk to those people. They don't want to hear from me. Uh, I'm too qualified. I, man, I'm a praise singer in the church. I'm not part of the outreach team. That's delegated to just a few people. And I've got a different way that I serve the kingdom. I have a different role. I have different experience. I'm too qualified. You know what's interesting? If there's ever anybody that was too qualified to share the gospel, it was God manifest in the flesh. But one day, hear me, one day he says to the boys I must go through Samaria and he stops for a woman at the well whose life is riddled with adultery if anybody was too qualified to talk to her to sit with her it was him so if he can take time for her so can I Come on, can I get a witness? Can I get a witness to the rich? Can I get a witness to the poor? Can I get a witness to the addict, to the drunk, to the widow? And number three, this one's going to hurt. It's going to hurt the most in coastal states like this one. Because the cost of living is no joke around here. The cost of living changes our lifestyle. Meaning if you want to survive, you work now we have the third reason people don't do this. They're too busy. If there's anything I've been guilty of, it's number three. I have been too busy to share the gospel. I didn't disagree with it, that it needed to be done. I just disagreed that I could do it. And so what my mind would do is I would resolve that I will procrastinate the propagation of the gospel to a later week. But you know what happens? As you get caught up in the Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, you begin to flip that calendar over one week and then another week and another week and another month. Now, because you're plugging away at work or at school, you are blessed, man. You get degrees, you get promotions, you get bigger homes, you get bigger cars, but let's march that out. At the end of the day, if you're consumed in that busyness, you will go to the grave and be unable to take the car and the house and the retirement plan and the promotion and the degree. But if you made time in the middle of the nine to five to be a witness, my friend, you can take every soul that you win. You can take every last one of them. Now the last of these, the only fourth reason I've found. Now no one has actually let this leave their mouth. Not phrased like this, but they just too lazy. I'd like, it's going to be one of the highlights of my ministry when somebody comes up and they're like, bro, I'm just way too lazy for that. They won't say it that way. You know what they'll say? Oh, that's not my personality. Man, imagine, dude, we don't do that with anything else. Remember, this is commanded. There's over 200 scriptures in the New Testament commanding us to be witnesses, be soul winners, to go, to preach, all this sort of thing, to baptize, over 200 scriptures. Now, we don't come to God and be like, God, hey, hey, God, you know that I love heroin. 
And so I'm not going to change that after I come to you. None of us would approach the cross and be like, God, I get to keep this part of my life that is in direct disobedience to Scripture. Yet for some reason, when it comes to witnessing, we think we get an out in saying, oh, I don't really like that. I don't really gravitate to that. That's not who I am. Hey, when is the last time that it mattered who you were before you came to Jesus? When I come to Him, I am in a process of becoming like Him. If He did this, I'm going to do this If he could talk to somebody I'll talk to somebody I'll give you some stories Man we got to mix this up but in some, I'll give you some stories So in, I, was in, I was in Florida and this brother came up to me And he actually somehow in one conversation Gave me like all four excuses at the same time He comes up and he's like Bro man I've been slammed at work Just super busy It's not my personality to be doing this Man I'm not really good enough To be telling anybody like you do about Jesus And, and bro I, I just man I already do all this other stuff for the church And run the van and whatever So bro I just I don't know about all that And I'm like bro you've got to be kidding me. I said on Wednesday night after I preached, you came up after and bro, you talked my ear off for like 45 minutes at the altar. Don't you act like you can't talk, homeboy. I'm telling you, if you just roll with me tomorrow, we're going to talk to some people and bro, you're going to do awesome. So I get him in the van, and we, we get out, and we go on outreach, and we're talking to people at apartments and parking lots and fairs and colleges and whatever, and we pull up, and at this point, we're at one apartment complex, park, get out of the van, and the first thing I see is this uh, African-American lady sitting there having lunch, and she is eating the straight-up nastiest-looking thing I've ever seen in my life, and I'm so intrigued by what in the nasty is that that I, like, my ADD fired, and I'm like, regardless of her outcome in eternity, I need to know what that is and so I'm like bro let's go talk to that lady and we get over there and I say hey what in the world are you eating sis does it sound like I'm witnessing I'm just chatting and she begins to tell me she just moved to America from another country a couple years ago and this is a national dish from where she's from and I've asked some questions about it. I'm like oh, okay well I've never seen that mess before so I had to had to ask what's going on there and I said right there I flipped the script and I said sis let me ask you a question do you, where do you go to church and she said uh, she said actually I'm Lutheran and when she said she's Lutheran it looked like you took home fry and popped him with a pin he all of a sudden deflated like bro this is a waste of time she ain't never coming to church she says she's Lutheran let's just bounce man. Hey, I, and we talked. I said, that's awesome that you're Lutheran, that you've been going to church. You know about Jesus. And I said, but hey, sis, that wasn't the question. The question was, where do you go to church? And she says, well, actually, the Lutheran church doesn't give rides. And so I don't go to church anywhere. So I wanted him to have the win on this. So I cleared my throat real obnoxious, like, <clears> throat> He didn't get it. Uh -uh. And I'm throwing my head towards the van we just got out of. And finally, he clues in. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, sis. Well, we've got rides. We could pick you up on Sunday. She puts down that crazy looking dish and she says, she, she pauses for a minute. And she says, well, actually, I guess I could be a Pentecostal. Come on! No flip chart. No Bible study. We're talking about what you're eating. How many Lutherans are ready to be Pentecostals? How many Hindus are ready to be Pentecostals? How many Catholics are ready to be Pentecostal? So come Sunday morning, we picked her up. She sat in the second row. We gave an altar call, asked if anybody wants to be baptized. Sis was the first one that came up, got baptized in Jesus' name. She got changed, came back to the altar call, and God filled her with the gift of the Holy Ghost. We were out on outreach one day, and again, like, I am, I am the most... I have the most pathetically uh, straight-laced background that you could imagine. I wasn't raised in church. 
but I wasn't raised around a lot of hood. Man, one day we were on outreach, and I get out of the van, uh, and we got a, like a youth group with me. And as soon as we get out on outreach, it was kind of a shady park, and there's all kinds of shadiness happening at the park. And I look back, and man, that youth group, uh, this is the first time I believed in evolution because <laughs> that youth group looked like, you know how the geese fly in a V? They were all behind me in a V so that if bullets start flying, only I get shot. I don't really believe in evolution. That was a joke. <laughs> and I looked at that youth group, and we were headed for the playground because I thought that'd be a gentle place to drop off all the straight-laced white kids. <laughs> and as I looked back at the youth group, I saw them look over at the picnic benches and throw their noses up in the air at the gangsters that were sitting over at the picnic benches. And man, don't you do that to me, because the second you threw your nose up, you committed us to a board plan playground, and we're going straight over to gang town. <laughs> so I took my little goslings over to the gang. Now, I'm not going to lie, as I started approaching, that boldness started fading. <laughs> And as I got closer to them, they all looked at one dude. And I realized he must be the leader that's about to decide if I live or die. And I thought, well, if I go out, I might as well go out guns blazing. I walk right up and I'm like, bro, we're from the church. You got to check it out. Man, have you ever heard Acts 2.38? I start telling him, come on, we might as well just go straight for it sometimes. And that whole gang with them is breathless. Like you could hear a pin drop and they're waiting to, to, to see if this guy's going to pull a nine out and just ice me right there in the park. And as he's looking back at me, these are the words that leaves his mouth. He says, actually, I just got out of prison. That's not good news when you're standing in the scenario I am. But he follows with this. And I just told God I will do whatever it takes to get my life right. He turned back to the boys and he said, guys, get in the van. We're all going to get baptized. We took the whole gang, baptized them all in Jesus' name. My friend, I need a witness. I need a witness at your work. I need a witness in the park. I need a witness in the neighborhoods. I need a witness. It's not limited to one group. It's not limited to one income class. I baptized nurse practitioners. One of these last services, I was up in Seattle. I had four doctors I brought to church with me. I brought hospital administrators. I brought nurses. I brought managers. I brought directors. We baptized a professional Super Bowl ring-wearing Seahawks player in Seattle that, to my knowledge, is still in the church today. Holy Ghost filled. Come on, somebody. It is for all. Say all. Oh, can I get a witnesses for all? That means the witnesses need to go to all, all, all. The Asbury Revival was a wake-up call for me. I realized that there is something happening in America that is bigger than I realized. I'd never seen a hunger like was happening at Asbury. People by the thousands were flying to that little college in that church, and they were having their version of revival 24 hours a day. It reminded me that something is happening in America, and if we would get in invested in this thing, there is no telling what God could do. I ought to give you a story just just encourage somebody here. I, I, if I would, I'd tell you about Azusa, but I imagine a lot of you know about Azusa. I don't know how many of you have studied the Welsh Revival. It is equally impressive. There's a period of time that God was trying to reach to a nation that had not heard the gospel and was incredibly underrepresented. They had some of the lowest Bible sales of any nation in the world. And out in Wales in the early 1900s, there's a young Evan Roberts, and he walked into a tent-style meeting, and it was called the 
God meeting. While he was in Bible school, he went into that place and he heard the preacher. And all of a sudden, he began to pray that God would, the words are, bend him. He records that moment and he wrote saying, I felt a living power pervading my bosom. It took my breath away and my legs trembled exceedingly. That living power became stronger and stronger until I felt it would tear me apart. My whole bosom was in turmoil and if I had not prayed I would have burst. I fell on my knees and with my arms in the seat in front of me my face was bathed in perspiration and tears flowed in streams. I cried out bend me, bend me, bend me and at that moment I was filled with compassion for those that must bend at the judgment and I wept. Following that the salvation of the human soul was impressed on me. I felt ablaze with the desire to go through the lengths and the breadth of whales to tell of the Savior. My friend you have no idea the next one that God wants to bring into the house that will pray bend me change me use me and they will be the catalyst of a great revival He used to be a coal miner, and so after that moment, he returned to the coal mines, and he took the gospel right back to those people, to the poor, to the miner, to the rich. His fervor for God was contagious, and it became uninterrupted years of nightly revival across the country. One man started a revival so significant that it would arrest the attention of an entire nation. There is then no telling what could happen if but a handful in this room caught the same amount of fervor, the same amount of passion and would take the gospel out to this county come on it then grew the stories say that it grew into a handful of spirit-filled young people, including spirit-filled young women. Meetings would go on for many hours, often more than 10 hours straight without a break. Night after night after night, people lost all sense of time. Churches were so full that crowds were gathering on the outside until they could somehow squeeze their way in. The meetings broke the convention, bypassed the tradition. Often ministers would just sit down, unable to preach or even understand the phenomena that took their usually sedate church and chapels over as the mighty move of God began to impact people. By 1904, thousands were filling churches, leaning over the railings, packing every pew, squeezing in every corner, and they would stay in those services not once a week, but again night after night after night, passionate singing, worship, disregard for the clock. This is what the story says. The meetings were characterized by supernatural leading. There was spontaneity. There was no evidence of the meeting being directed by preachers or church officials. It was simply a move of God. The London Daily wrote this. You feel that the thousands before you have become merged into one. You can watch what they call the influence of the power of the Spirit playing over the congregation as an ebbing wind would play over the surface of a pond. And it was this vast, quivering, throbbing, singing, praying, exultant multitude that is intensely conscious of the all-pervading influence of the invisible reality that they call the Spirit of God. They're writing about it in the newspaper. My friend, it is the will of God that what happens in this room is written about in the newspaper, in the magazines, that it is aired on TV and it's moving through the radio. But for that to ever happen, we need a witness. We need a witness. I could read story after story, but for the sake of time, I won't. Let me just say this. That took off to such a level. Businesses around the nation were closing early because entire cities were in church and they had no customers. The police force had layoffs as crime was at an all-time low. Football teams, you can look this up, football teams were disbanded because both the audience and the players had lost interest in the game. 
books and magazines were burned and now replaced with a record sale of Bibles until not a single Bible existed in the nation. Bars went out of business as there was no interest in alcohol. Graffiti was now scriptures. You could hear singing in the streets. My friend, America is posed for the greatest awakening it has ever seen. But it hinges on a witness. I am so desperate to bring others to know him. I know that you're just getting introduced to me, but I promise you can call my pastor. You can call any human being that's ever known me for any amount of time. I am consumed by this idea. It occupies my every thought, my every dream, my every ambition. You can look at my bank account. It is my spending. It's my talking, my goals, my family, my dreams. I want revival. I want every one of them to experience what I did. I want every last one of them to be changed like I was. Come on, can I get a witness? Man, I got to land this thing. I got a timer and I'm not, I'm not happy with it. So similar to the Asbury Revival, I want to tell you firsthand, I am seeing. I know that this is, every, every time I say this stuff, nobody believes me, but I am seeing the very same thing that happened in the Welsh Revival. The very thing, same thing that happened at Azusa. The very same thing that we see at Asbury. I am seeing it happen and springing up all around America at apostolic tongue talking, holy rolling events. Why not here? Why not this church? Why not this city? Come on, let's do something big for God. Not a handful. Not by the tens. Not by the hundreds. God, give us thousands. This is what I've seen. People, I, I'm not even going to, I'm going to speak of my last event. My last event People were traveling from hours away. People were booking hotels. These are unchurched people, not apostolics. They were booking hotels that they might stay there for the duration of a revival that they heard about that somebody shared on Facebook. The last revival, we had 20 people that were from out of state. They traveled in Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana to be at something that they heard about in Florida. There were locals that heard the music and the worship outside. They closed their business early came out with their spouse with their workers all to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost we baptize atheists after God fill them with the Holy Ghost we baptize pastors of other denominations and their entire congregations We had a conversation about it in the car. We have to teach churches how to restructure how we baptize. These events have so many, uh, have so many, we cannot run them through one tank. I could show you pictures. We're running three tanks, uh, baptizing at the same time in all three tanks. Uh, we start baptizing during pre-service music practice, and we don't stop till the lights go out. Uh, my friend, they're not coming by fives. Uh, they're not coming by tens. Uh, I'm talking little. Literally hundreds and hundreds. We are positioned for the greatest revival we've ever seen. All right, let's do these slides real quick. Brother A.V., if we could. Slide number one. This might be hard to read. It says, I was at Chick-fil-A tonight. A worker saw my Jesus shirt, and he said, he is coming. He looked up, saw a shirt, and it just said, Jesus Tent Revival. And he said, bro, I'm coming to that. And this is the backstory. He said he was cleaning up the trash in the parking lot, and he found one of the flyers where we had been doing outreach in the parking lot, and he wanted to be there, looked it up, and he saw the shirt, and he said, I'll be there brother from Chick-fil-A baptized in Jesus name God filled with the don't you tell me they're not hungry he found that on the ground and God changed his life but it took a witness. It took a witness at Chick-fil-A. Hey, it's going to take a witness at McDonald's. It's going to take a witness at Applebee's. It's going to take a witness at the gas station. Let's go to the next slide. 
This is an awesome story. This lady got invited to church. That's Sister Pastor's wife baptizing, baptizing her right there. This lady got invited to church by her over a year and a half in advance, and they were over an hour and a half from the church. And Sister Pastor's wife was chasing her down, trying to get her attention because that lady's fully deaf. And when she heard about the revival, she traveled over an hour and a half to be there. Sister Pastor's wife baptized her in Jesus' name. And what she said to her after she got baptized, she said, when we met, you were fine following me and now I'm following you. This is my church. Come on somebody. I'm telling you people are going to follow you that you've been chasing around for years. I'm telling you backsliders are ready to come to church we haven't seen in years. Come on somebody. Revival is here. Revival is now. It just needs a witness. It needs a witness at school. It needs a witness at the mall. It needs a witness at work. We go to the next slide. Oh, I love this, man. This was the fastest I ever saw it happen. This brother walked in late to church in the first, in the first song. He's late. And in the first song, no preaching, no sermon, no teaching. He comes in crippled as could be, moving slowly, makes it from the back around your left side as he's looking for a chair right there. He lifts his hands and God fills him with the gift of the Holy Ghost, begins speaking in time. doesn't stop walking he sees the baptismal tank makes it up to the baptismal tank gets baptized in Jesus name again we're still singing he's got no clue what's going on then when he comes up out of the water you should have saw the look on his face he shouted out I'm healed I'm healed for the rest of the service he held that cane up what am I saying five minutes in the presence of God five Five minutes, uh, they're going to repent. Uh, they're going to get the Holy Ghost. Uh, they're going to get baptized. Uh, they're going to be healed. You ask him the story? He just heard about us on Facebook. Yeah, go ahead. Go to the next one. Just Facebook. This one was amazing. This guy, this guy right here, he came in. You can kind of see it in those pictures. I promise he's more dramatic in real life. He came in terminal, terminal with a disease. So he... He's real worried, and he came for a miracle that day. He was so weak that as he came down, he sat up by this, this front center, maybe three, four rows back. In the middle of that worship service, he collapsed on the ground, and he literally was so weak, so pale, so anemic. He did not have the strength to stand back up. When we gave a call for if anybody wants prayer, he literally crawled on his belly to the front for prayer. We prayed with him, and he whispered out, I want to be baptized. So we took him over, and two men helped him, got him into the tank. He went down pale as a sheet. I don't know if you can catch that. When he came up, he wasn't pale no more. All of a sudden, he had strength in his body, rose up out of the tank of his own volition and strength. He got baptized, and that's my son praying with him when God filled him with the Holy Ghost after he got baptized. Come on, I want a witness. We need to reach the terminal, the sick, the dying, the poor, the addicted. Come on. Let's go to the next one. This lady, I, this is probably my favorite picture that we've ever had. I don't know who snapped this, this, this shot. That moment, I said it this morning, that moment, that face is why I do everything I do. It is why I would give every cent I have a thousand times over. It is why I would drive through the entire night to put a tent up in the middle of a cornfield by faith. It's why I would do a block party in 120 degree weather. That face is why we do what we do. It's why God filled you with the Holy Ghost that you might be a witness. That picture was taken the moment this blind woman was instantly healed and she could see again. That's the face of somebody that just realized God is real. And he cares about me. Come on, somebody. This is real. God is real. He's moving. He's alive. He's well. We need a witness. We go to the next one. Man, I, I put this one in as a reminder. We were in a service. I, I could not tell you all of what happened in that one service. You would literally not believe me. But in that list 
of what happened in the span of 30 seconds. There were men and women there that were pulling out hearing aids. And in this case, a cochlear implant in the brain. Because God had just restored their hearing. And I'm telling you, my friend, it wasn't anything about me. But Jesus came into the room that day. The reason that we witness isn't about us. It's not about the brand. It's not about the building. It's not about being known or remembered by them. It's because if Jesus comes into the room, he'll heal them. He'll change them. He'll save them. Next slide if we got one. Man, this guy, he had such urgency to get baptized. We tried to convince him to get changed. He literally refused. He hopped. He, okay, true story. He, he, all he did was take his cowboy boots and he had a gun. And he got rid of the two, the cowboy boots and the gun. And he climbed over the side of that baptistry tank. And we baptized that dude in his street clothes. The next day, he came back to the revival. And he said, I thought this happened, but I didn't want to tell you till I confirmed. When I went down in that water, I was blind. But I went to the doctor today and I have got 20-20 vision in both eyes. Come on, somebody. There's a reason we witness. There's a reason we witness. Come on, they're hungry for something real. They're hungry for something that can change them, heal them, help them, and we've got it. We go to the next one. Okay, these pictures might not all be as pretty. We took them on the fly. This guy's name is Sean. Everybody say Sean. Say hi, Sean. Hi, Sean rolls up late in the middle of my preaching in a Harley Davidson. And there's reasons I was scared, okay? Uh, I'm, one, I'm scared of all Harleys. Like, my kids ask me, what, when they drive by on the freeway and they hear Harley, and they're like, Dad, what was that sound? I'm like, it's bad people. Like, to, they're all hell's angels. I don't know, man. I'm just super scared. So he rolls up on, on, a, on a Harley right in the middle of the preaching, and I think, man, oh, boy, this is going to be one of those crazy stories where I'm going to get shot in the middle of my message. And he rolls up, and the day that he had come, he's wearing leathers all top to bottom, dreadlocks, tattoos all over the place. Man, Sean comes in, and in that service, even though he missed the music, even though he missed all of our nice production, and he came in for the tail end of the preaching, at the end, he jumped onto the platform with me and Pastor, and with tears running down his face, he said, Pastor, uh, this is my church. I've been looking for this my whole life. Now, I got to tell you the back story. Hold on, hold on. How did Sean hear about the thing? He said, bro, I was just driving this motorcycle. I was in a parking lot like 15 minutes ago. And when I was in that parking lot, I came to a stop sign in the parking lot. And evidently, you had some people there. You must have been putting flyers on cars. Somebody must have took it off, folded it in half, not wanted it, thrown it on the ground. Well, when I was at that parking, uh, that, that stop sign in the parking lot, and I came to just a brief stop, he said, I looked over, and under the front tire of a vehicle, the wind had carried a folded flyer, and all I could say, see, was the word Jesus under that tire. He said, something drew me to that. I've been looking for a church. I've been needing a change. I threw my kickstand down, opened it up, and it said, the Jesus Tent Revival so I drove straight here. Go to the next slide. Sean not only stayed in the church, that's Sean getting baptized in Jesus' name. Go to the next slide. Come on, somebody. Look at that. Look at that. That's what God wants to do here. Go to the next one. Come on, come on. That's Sean coming at the building dedication. He brought his family of five. Go to the next one. Two years later, Sean's working in the cafe. Come on, somebody. God will build a church if we'll witness. You can't tell me they're not hungry. You can't tell me they're not ready. Come on, God's ready to do this. Do we have anything else or is that it? That might be it. That might be it. Amen. If you stand together with me, I think that's it. Amen. If you stand together with me, people are incredibly hungry. My friends, you don't need a tent to have revival. You don't need a building to have revival. But you will not have revival without a witness. Somebody say witness. All right, now we got to end it right now. I'm just going to say one last little doctrinal point. My understanding of Mark 16 and 15, Jesus said, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not will be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. How many has ever preached this, heard this, right? They're going to cast out devils. They're going to speak in tongues. They're going to take up serpents. They're going to drink daily. You know what? We get it backwards. We preach about all the miracles, and then if we feel good enough about the miracles, we go and preach to the lost. Then we wonder, why, isn't, why aren't we a miracle-working church? 
Why aren't we seeing more get the Holy Ghost? Because it started with go and preach the gospel. When you do that from who you bring in, then these signs shall follow them that if you want to see more miracles than you've ever seen, you bring some people that need miracles. If you want to see more healing than you've ever imagined, you bring some people that need healing. If you want to see demons cast out, you bring some demoniacs. If you want to see people get the Holy Ghost, bring the empty. Come on, God designed the church that when we witness... Amen. If you'd come and gather around the front, we're going to pray. I want God to use me. You always see the most action at the front line. Don't get me wrong. I know somebody needs to be planning. I know somebody needs to be designing. But you will always see the most action at the front line. We're going to be front line apostolics. Everybody we know, I'm believing, can get the Holy Ghost. I believe the sick you know. They'll be healed. I believe the bounds you know God will set free. Can I get a witness? Man, I wish I'd, I'm totally out of time. We got to just pray. But I'm telling you right now, you are a witness. You were born for this. You were designed for this. You were filled with the Holy Ghost for this. I believe in the next few minutes, God's going to give you a, just a baptism of it afresh. You're going to have boldness. You're going to be effective. I believe all of a sudden, scriptures are going to pop out of you like never popped out of you before. I believe you're going to pray people through even if you've never done it once. I believe some of you are going to cast out devils. I believe some of you are going to lay hands and instantly blind eyes see. Instantly deaf ears hear. Instantly can't answers fall off. Why? I gave you power that you might be a witness. Lord, right now, I'm going to get out of the way, but Lord, right now, I pray for every man, woman, and child. You didn't call us to sit there silent. You didn't call us to sit idly by. I pray now that you would make us witnesses. Give us a baptism anew. Give us power anew. Lord, use me. Come on, pray. Lord, use me. Empower me. I'm ready to be a witness. Come on. Come on. In Jerusalem. Yes. In Judea. Yes. In Samaria. Yes. And to the other most parts of the earth. I'll be a witness at work. I'll be a witness at school. I'll be a witness to the ones like me and the ones different than me. I'll be a witness. Come on, there's an awakening. There's a revival. There's an open door. Don't you miss this. This is the moment to seize. This is the hour to walk through it. God, reach anybody and everybody through me. I'm not waiting for another. I'm not saying next week, next month, next year. No, no, no. Now, I'm willing to be a witness now. Use my car. Use my time. Use my finances. Use my family. Come on, somebody, in the name of of Jesus, make me a witness. Come on, would you lift your voice? Something's changing in your heart right now. Something's changing your mind right now. God, I pray that you would do for them like you did for the 12. Right now, open our eyes that we might see this harvest, that it is white and that it is ready. Come on, somebody. It is white and it's ready. There's somebody ready for this right now at your work. There's somebody ready right now at your school. Come on, somebody. I need a witness. Yes, 
Lord, I pray right now that God, come on, if we have the authority to do this, I invite you to pray like this with me. God, I pray right now that you would give us a new dimension of dominion and revival in this area unlike one that we've ever had before. I bind every demon. I cast out every barrier. And I'm praying right now that you would open a door of revival in this city. I pray right now that God, you would cause there to be a great awakening. That hunger would sweep through every neighborhood, every family, every sinner, every attic. And God, I will go. I'll carry the gospel to them all. As many as I can. As many ways as I can. As many places as I can. But God, I'm not content. Let revival break out. In the name of Jesus, fill your house. Fill your house. Fill it, Lord. I pray somebody gets baptized every single service for the rest of time. I pray somebody gets the Holy Ghost every service for the rest of time. I pray that, God, you'd fill it from the front to the back. Come on. I pray that you'd fill it. Fill it. Fill it, Lord. Jesus, 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 come on, that's it, that's it, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight, come on, something's happening, something's shifting, oh, hallelujah, can I get a witness, come on, north side of town, we need a witness, south side of town, we need a witness, to the east, to the west, to the college, to your neighborhood, to your I need a witness. Hallelujah. Let's make it practical right now, right here. We got boxes up here with thousands. I mean, literally tens of thousands of these. This little, this little piece of paper and 15 second conversation can make the difference in eternity for somebody. Every picture you saw started with this or started on Facebook. Every single one you saw. Would you extend your hands this direction? Let's pray over these and then let's all grab some and let's do some junk for Jesus this year. Come on. Would you extend your hands this way? Come on. Jesus right now. I pray over every piece of material that this church puts out. I'm praying right now over every video that we post this year. I'm praying right now business cards, flyers, door hangers, Bible studies, anything that leaves this building. I pray it would be anointed that God, you would get it into the hands of the hungry, that you would bring it into their remembrance, that you would draw the lost into your house. Come on, somebody. Anoint it right now. Every card, every flyer, in the name of Jesus, as we take it to the streets, as we take it to work, as we take it to school. Come on, witnesses, anoint it in the name of Jesus. Now I want you to come up, everybody. Come up and grab some. Don't let it collect dust. Don't just sit it in your glove box. I want you to grab some and get them out. Everybody say, get them out. Hallelujah, get them out. Come on, witnesses, let's grab some. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm believing. Come on, somebody. I'm believing God is going to reach some souls. I'm believing we're going to see some people added to the kingdom. How many want to see some friends baptized in Jesus' name? How many want to see some lawyers baptized in Jesus' name? How many want to see some doctors baptized in Jesus' name? Come on, take a card. Give it to the lawyer. Give it to the doctor. Give it to the teacher. Give it to your family. Give it to your friends. I need a witness. Come on, somebody. I need a witness. If you, if you got faith for two, grab 10. Come on, you got faith for 10, grab 20. Come on, come on. That's it. We need some witnesses in the house. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we bless you. We lift
lift you up, mighty God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We got some witnesses. We're going to win some people. We're going to grow the church. Amen. I'm going to pray one more time. I'll hand it off. Lord, I pray right now that, God, you would bury this in our hearts, mine, mine included. I pray that, God, you would possess us with the mission you were possessed with. I pray that, God, we would seek and save that which is lost. Let your church be effective. Let your people reach the unreachable in the name of Jesus. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Everybody should get at least 10 of these cards. Some of you may want to get more, but get at least 10. And let's set a goal of giving them out this week and inviting people to church. Praise God. Do you feel like you've heard a word from the Lord tonight? Come on, anybody feel like you've heard from God tonight? Let me tell you what's happening. If everybody had stop and listen to me for just a second. Listen to me for one second. Let me tell you what's happening. Next Sunday is Mother's Day. So we're going to have normally a lot of guests here. We'll have even more guests here because of what's happening here tonight. Hopefully you'll get all your friends and family to come with you. And then the Sunday after that is Pentecost Sunday. Where the Kleindents will be with us on Sunday morning and Sunday night. And Sunday night, we're opening up to the section, to all of our daughter works and preaching points and all of that. We hope to have a big crowd here, but more importantly, we hope to have a bunch of people that need to be baptized and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. So let's start right now. We have two weeks from tonight. This isn't planned. This isn't discussed. This wasn't something we all worked together. I didn't know. I thought I... I kind of made the prediction this man could not preach without preaching about soul winning. So I kind of knew that that would probably be the way he would go, but I didn't know what he was going to do. And I didn't, I didn't, we didn't put some plan together for the next two weeks. But if you'll work with us with what's happening here tonight, what God is saying to us, and all these cards that Brother Crouch and our men brought out here so you could have them, we could make the next two weeks count, folks, like you can't believe. I mean, we could have us a harvest, and here's what's beautiful. In the harvest will be your friends, your family, people you witness to, people you work with, people you live in the same neighborhood with. That's who can be in that harvest. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. If you didn't get enough cards, we're going to leave them out here for a little bit. You can come and get some more. If you... If you Please, if you didn't get any cards at all, everybody participate. I, I don't think there's anybody in here couldn't give out two cards, right? I, anybody could give out two cards. So come and get you some cards and participate. Let's do this as a, as a unified church effort to see what God will do for us. I know we're already in revival, but you know what I want? I want that kind of revival he was talking about that the news reports it. I want that kind of revival that it's going to be on television. Somebody said amen. I got a phone call on Tuesday of this week from Brother Travis Worthington. I think he's watching right now. He was at a political event in Washington, D.C. You know he lives in the D.C. area in Alexandria, and he was at a political event, and they had a sign up there that caught his attention. The sign said, Lieutenant Governor Winsome Sears will be speaking at Bible World Church on May the 24th at, what is it? At 7 o'clock. He sent me, a, he took a picture of it, took a snapshot, sent it to me. I did, we didn't have anything on the schedule that she's going to be speaking here that night. But then the same day, I get a call from him said, Winston Sears wants to come to Bible World Church and speak 
and talk. I'm sure it's going to be a political rally. But I'm telling you, folks, we didn't invite them. They got no letter from us. We didn't introduce ourselves to them. They called and said, can we come to Bible World? Hello? You hear me? It may be a whole bunch of little things that's happening right now that we're reporting to you as we go along. But you got to see the big picture. God is doing something right now. Nobody can deny that God is at work. Nobody can desire. You, you, there's no way you can think that God's not behind all of this. Clap your hands and shout, yes. My, 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 my. Do me a favor. I put Brother Channel in the Suffolk Church as pastor. He was my choice. And I persuaded all them he was their choice. This is a good man. And God's, what'd you have Easter Sunday? Tell him. 156 on Easter Sunday. Turn your hand toward Brother Channel. Y'all remember what God told me about five, six weeks ago? Remember about God said, if you'll fill your boat up and then be worried about filling every other boat up, God said, I'll fill them all up. Raise your hands toward Brother Channel that's with us tonight. And I want you to ask God to open doors and make a way and use him and use that great church. Oh, God, we need a powerful church in Suffolk. We need a great church in Suffolk. I thank you for those wonderful people. I thank you for that wonderful church. I thank you for giving them a wonderful pastor and pastor's family. Oh, God, do the work. Do the work, I pray. Yes, 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 yes. Well, while we're doing it, we might as well do some more. Raise your hands and let's pray for Portsmouth. Sister Donna Linville in that church. You just went over there on Sunday night a couple weeks ago. Pray, God, pour out your spirit in Portsmouth. Pour out your spirit in Portsmouth. Everybody ask God to pour out his spirit in Norfolk. Pour out your spirit in Norfolk. Send a mighty revival to Norfolk. Everybody ask God to pour out his spirit in Virginia Beach. In Virginia Beach. God, pour out your spirit in Virginia Beach. In the bush, mahata. In the God, fill up their boat until it about sinks. Give them everything they can handle and more. Let there be a great sweeping revival. God, we've got over 2 million people in Tidewater. We've got to have a massive revival. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. My Lord, my Lord. Brother Cunningham, I've never been to a church that prayed for another church. Well, get used to it. Get used to it. We're going to hold up one another. We're going to pray for one another. We're going we're to encourage one another. And I'm telling you, my staff knows I'm doing it. This isn't just words. Everything that God gives us, I'm giving it away to other people. Everything. I'm sharing it with them. I'm sharing principles. I'm sharing speakers. I'm sharing with them. Because I don't just want to fill up this boat. I want to see all the boats full and running over. Brother, Car Brother Rivera is our Spanish pastor right here in the middle. Ronnie, Jordan, you guys lay your hands on him. Brother Bob, Rick, anybody close, come lay your hands on him. This is our Spanish church. They're doing good, running about 130, 140. I want you to pray right now for great revival. Would you reach a hand toward our Spanish pastor? In the Boshato, Mahata. In the Rodada Bati, Rodada Mohoshato. Kia Rodada Bada Manda, Yara Mohoshato, Rodada Bahaya. 
Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory, glory. Keep praying for Brother Clarence Miller, for Brother Ben Bryant, Brother Kelsey Wilkins. Our daughter works in Emporia. Not daughter works, but preaching points in Emporia and in Franklin. Our outreach in Hopewell. Come on. Raise your hands and the the Spirit of God's in this room right now. God is moving among us right now. Oh, yes, Lord. This is your work. We're not doing this for us, God. We're doing this for you. This is your church. This is your work. Glory. Aren't you glad to be a part of an apostolic revival church? Praise God. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. My Lord. I heard a comedian the other day talking about churches. And he said, you know, when the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first, he wasn't talking about you people that don't do nothing. He wasn't talking about people that don't worship. People don't go to church, dead in Christ. That isn't what he's talking about. He's talking about people in the grave. Aren't you glad you don't belong to the first church of the frigid air? Every time you come to church, something special is going to happen. Every time you come to the house of God, there's going to be a word of God in the house of God. Praise God. I'm so excited about what God's doing. So excited about what I believe God's going to do. My, 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 my. I'm, I'm thankful for what's already been done. I'm thankful for what God's already done. I don't want to ignore that or not give him praise for that. But I'm going to tell you in no uncertain terms, you ain't seen nothing yet. Everything we've seen, you ain't seen nothing yet. Praise God. Shake hands with as many. Well, where's Troy? I better let Troy do. Make sure we don't get messed up around here. Right as soon as Troy is done, shake hands, hug neck, smile at one another, love one another, and then you can be dismissed. Brother Troy, thank you. Praise the Lord. Can the AV booth put that NACLC slide back up there, the forum? The NACLC slide, if you can put that back up there. There is a QR code that is on this slide, and there is no registration cost for it, but we, uh, we are asking that people, if you plan to attend that event that Friday night at 7 p.m., to hear our Lieutenant Governor Winsome Earl, uh, Winsome Earl Sears, uh, she'll be here in that, that form and obviously be making a presentation. If you do plan to attend that, you can register for that event again at 7 p.m. on that Friday, May the 24th. We encourage uh, many of you to be here. It's going to be uh, a blessing, and we understand that, that God is, this is not happenstance. This is uh, revival. This is what God has plans, and God has plans to take this national and global, and we're glad to just be a part of it. Sunday, of course, is Mother's Day. We picked up the cards here. Again, every card that you hand out, pray over every card, every invitation that you hand out. Let's pack the house here on Mother's Day Sunday. That morning, we will have no evening service, but that Mother's Day service is always special. It'll be a baby dedication that takes place there as well. And then Pentecost Sunday is the very next Sunday, and we anticipate a full house for their clients. They'll be here preaching in the morning and in the evening. As his bishop says, it'll be open up to the district Sunday evening. We'll have a Holy Ghost rally and a healing crusade. It's going to be a powerful, powerful time. Praise the Lord. How many of you love the Lord Jesus? Isn't he so good to us? Praise God.
Take the words that you've heard both this morning and this evening from Brother Anderson. Let that fire get inside of you. The Bible says in Numbers chapter 6, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give you peace. God bless you. The church loves you. Jesus loves you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.